Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to publish my web page file so that they're live on the web and they can be viewed in a more realistic way and also gives you access to them. Okay, so I've already got web hosting and I'm using a paid hosting service called DreamHost. And there's lots of hosting options out there. If you did a Google search for web hosts, you'd find dozens, if not hundreds of them. Uh, Lifehacker, the website, they, they about every year or so, they'll put out a... Uh, uh, top five web hosts uh, kind of list and review. Uh, DreamHost often comes up number five or in that top five. And there's a bunch of others out there also. So, so I'm not really going to push the particular web hosting service, but I do want to show you once you do have web hosting, how easy it is to publish. And then also how important it is to maintain uh, file structures on the server just as they are on your local machine. So I'm using FileZilla, which is a very popular FTP program, which is a file transfer protocol program. And it's used for interacting between your remote server on the right and your local machine on the left. There's lots of FTP programs out there, but FileZilla is free and pretty easy to use. Now, whenever you have web hosting, especially web hosting that provides FTP access, you're going to have a, a host name, a username, and a password to log into that. Now, I've already recorded my login information, so I'm going to go ahead and jump over to that where I'm going to keep my demo files. And you'll see this pop up in just a second. So on the right, and I already did a, a test publish a little bit ago, but I've already got some files over here on the right. Now I do need to make some updates because I've changed some things. There's a couple ways I can update these files on the right. I can find the files locally by going over to my, um, to my desktop and then looking for my web page files, and there they are. Or I could have simply referred to my files in a file manager like this and I can drag them over from one to the other. But let's focus here on FileZilla for a second. So on the left is my local computer and on the right is my published online version. And let's see if we can't see something. I'm doing this on January 9th and we can see that my red page.html it was last modified at 11.04 a.m., but on the server, it was last modified at 10.11 a.m., almost an hour earlier. So at some point, I had made some changes to my red page.html that are not reflected in the online version. We can also see this in this way. This is the local version of my red page, and I can tell it's local because it's referring to my local C drive. Ralph, desktop, web page files, red page.html. And you'll notice my local version has visit Homer's City website. But let's look at the online version of my web page, of my red web page. Now here's the online version. You can tell it's different because the path is six minutes smarter.com slash demo file slash web dev slash red page.html. It's an online website, online web page. And even if I refresh, you'll notice the online version does not have the City of Homer hyperlink. So my local version contains content that has not been published to my online version. Super easy to do. What I'm going to do is take the red page on the left and drag it over to the right. Wait a second, I'll override. And now the red page on the right, you'll see, was last modified. 11.13 a.m. at a time after my local page. So now it's been updated. Another way we can tell they're the same, and I don't think it was this way before, was my file size was is now 923 bytes on both the local and the online version. So if I head back over to the browser, I'm on my online red page. If I hit refresh, it now has the City of Homer link, which functions and my online red page is the same as my local red page. And this is a pretty common practice when you're developing your website. You're going to make pages locally. You're going to make them look the way you want them to look. You're going to test them out. You're going to try the hyperlinks and make sure they function. And when you're satisfied with that, you're going to publish them using an FTP pro program like FileZilla. And then you're going to go online and you're going to see if those pages work 
online, and they should. If they work locally and you're keeping your file stru structure identical, then they should work online. Now, a couple important tips though to this. You'll notice that my local folder structure matches my online folder structure. And if there is ever any doubt, I can of course select everything in my local folder and drag it all the way over. And this is gonna replace everything. So I'll just click okay, 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 okay. Oops, cancel. All right, so everything's been updated. You can kind of see with the file file sizes, 446, 536, there we go. My subfolder, both contain my yellow pages. Those match up. If I go up one level, I can go into my images folder, photos, Alaska, images, photos, Alaska. Everything is the same. Now, whenever you go to upload, you don't want to upload all the files all the time. You only want to upload the things you worked on most recently. If you upload everything all the time, it's kind of a waste of time and a waste of bytes because you're uploading, you're uploading files that don't need to be uploaded. But it is important that your local folder structure matches your online folder structure.